Hi, in this video, I'm going to be doing a comparison between Quillbot Premium and Grammarly Premium. So you can decide whether or not um, one software is the right choice for you. I spent my money, so you don't have to. So let me get started. All right, so the very first thing is this is the proof. I have Quillbot Premium here. And this is, well, let me make sure that you can see it's Grammarly EDU. It's the same as Premium, all right? So they're both the paid version. You can see right off the bat. Now, let me show you what they have and their capabilities on paper. Both of them will have a grammar checker and a plagiarism checker. But where they differ is Quillbot has a paraphraser, a summarizer, a citation generator, a co-writer, and versus Grammarly, they only simply have the uh, plagiarism checker and the grammar checker. And they have different overall scores. But I'm going to get into the nitty gritty real quick. So, hey, I've been getting a lot of questions again. I've mentioned in another video how to make money with YouTube using AI tools to automate my channel and to save time while building traffic. So, hey, if you're interested in how to make money with YouTube using AI tools to automate a lot of your work and to build traffic, uh, I'll put a link in the description and it will take you to the course where you can see how I do that. It's just there for people who are interested. So let's get on with the video. Uh, what does that really mean when it comes down to creating content or editing your content? Oh, and by the way, they both have uh, Chrome extension, Doc extension, Word extensions, right? So those are the same as well. So what, what does it mean real quick when it comes down to, you know, how, how does each one work? Well, I'm going to do a quick demo for each one and, and give you a feel of what it's like. So I'm going to take a article, uh, let's say, right here okay I'm gonna take this article right here it is a free PLO article directory Okay, I'm gonna copy it all right and I'm gonna put it into each one and you can get a, a quick understanding of how each one works so when I import it into Grammarly premium it will ask me to set different goals whether it's academic business general email casual creative uh, the intent, whether it is in, to inform, describe, convince, or tell a story, audience, and formality. I'm just going to leave it at the default. I click on done. And then from here, it gives me an overall score. It gives me how many grammar alerts or possible errors I have, eight. It gives me how, you know, what's the clarity? It says it's a bit unclear. Engagement is a bit boring or bland. Uh, delivery is slightly off. And style guide is good. Now, when it comes to plagiarism, it gives me it, it takes a bit of time but once uh once it's rolling it'll give it'll tell me how unique this is now i'm gonna guess right off the bat that since this is a pl article it should not be that unique well I'm, i guess no, not many people use it all right so it's it's claims it's 100 percent uh, oh no, no it's 100 percent copied <laughs> okay so that makes sense all right so this is how Grammarly works. Now, if you upgrade to the premium, you get the plagiarism detector and you have unlimited, you know, uses of the plagiarism detector. There's no credit system or anything for any of these things. Uh, the other thing is, it'll give you other metrics right here, character, word count, sentences, that type of stuff. Um, if you want to make some kind of corrections, oops. All right, you go back, you just click plagiarism so you do get out of it. And then it'll have limited rewriting capabilities. All right? So in this case, yeah, they'll give you a suggestion. Instead of saying for all the advantages that you are offered by using prepared cards, comma, there, it, it tells you to rewrite it. And the suggestion is there are some disadvantages you need to be aware of for all the advantages offered by using prepared cards and then you can just click on rewrite now it doesn't do that for everything okay so it's only it's very limited in the rewriting capabilities now let me do the same thing for quillbot i'm going to paste it into the grammar checker so you compare apples to apples all right and in this case it has like limited you know kind of um it doesn't have as much information when it comes to gra grammar um detection grammar error detection but it's not bad it still detected 10 errors right and what re is really cool about it is you can just click one button and it fixes it for you boom 
right? All, all the grammar errors that I detected it fixed. Now let me just show you how much did that one little, uh, I guess, process. What did it improve the the grammar score by? Okay, so I'm going to copy this new and improved uh, Quillbot grammar, you know, edited um, document, and now I'm going to paste it over the original. So right now the original is 73, and uh, that that's what the readability score is, and it also has eight alerts. Okay, so keep that in mind. 73 with eight alerts. I'm going to go ahead and delete this, and clear this out. So it resets to zero. Then I'm going to put the improved version in here. And it, it boosted it up by five points and only one alert. Not too shabby. <laughs> and not too shabby. So that's the difference when it comes down to the grammar checker. On paper, yes, they both do have a grammar checker, but they are geared differently. One is kind of geared towards human input. Right? It, it just gives you an alert and it tells you there's a possible error. You need to fix it. And uh, let me just tell you the reason why, real quick, for the, the different strengths and weaknesses for each software. Grammarly started off as just that, a grammar checker uh, software, and then later on they added plagiarism detection and then other stuff. Uh, Quillbot, on the other hand, was always an AI. It was one of the first AI paraphrasers that I, 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 rem I can remember from way back in the day. So their AI capability is very, very strong. And then they later on added the grammar checker and plagiarism checker and other stuff. So that's why their rewriting capabilities or AI uh, correction is, is, is very good, right? in my opinion. It's very, very good. And that's why Grammarly is very weak right? because they all started in different, different uh, approaches. All right, so that, that's the grammar checker. All right? that, that's, that's how it works for each one. And let me go into the plagiarism checker now for Quillbot. We, we saw the one for Grammarly. Let me show you the one for um, Quillbot. Now, as you can see right off the bat, it has a 20-credit system. Right? So it does have a plagiarism checker, but it's limited. Right? And you can always buy more, but I just want to be very clear. So if you have to use, if you have to like, if you're like in a law firm or you have you're a teacher or something like that, and you have to check a lot of work for plagiarism, then I can tell you that. Uh, you know, you might want to go with maybe Copyscape, or you, you might want to go with uh, Grammarly. But um, let me just review view the report, and it says, you know, this is, this is how it works: 100% match, identical, 81%, minor changes, 18%, and it, it shows you the results. It's it's pretty thorough too. For uh, from what I can tell, it's. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> pretty strong so the plagiarism detection um, it, it seems a little bit stronger on, on Quillbot than it does on Grammarly but there's a credit based system all right so I want you to keep that in mind so when it comes to grammar checker um, grammar like if you need to do a lot of like automatic fixing then Quillbots for you but uh, if you need to do a lot of plagiarism checker then maybe Grammarly's for you all right so uh, let me move on to the pricing, and that's another point of contention I like to bring up. So when it comes down to the pricing, uh, Grammarly goes for about. Let me check real quick. It's about twelve dollars for the premium, right? And uh, I, I don't really go into business, but uh, just for your use alone, twelve dollars a month, and that that's it. There's no, <laughs> there's no like yearly bonus or anything like that. From from what I can remember, what I can tell, twelve dollars a month is what you pay. And w with Coolbot, you can pay if you pay half a year up front. It's it goes down to six dollars and sixty cents a month, and then if you pay for a year, it goes down to four dollars and seventeen cents per month. All right, and then the regular just monthly subscription is about ten dollars. All right, so uh, that's the one I'm currently on right now. All right, this is the one I'm currently using just to try it out, kind of get my feet wet to see if it's if it's worth it. Um, so far, I'm I'm liking Quillbot more than Grammarly. I was a avid Grammarly user for the longest times. Um, and I did use Quillbot. I actually used both, but I used Grammarly for ch for checking uh, my work and maybe detecting grammar grammatical errors. And then when it came to Quillbot, I used it more for 
um, paraphrasing. That was its strength. So let me let me show you what Quillbot can do that Grammarly can't do. All right. So now you got the paraphraser. Let me click on that. Let me uh, paste my text in here. Okay. And then you got different ways you can go ahead and and paraphrase it. You know, you have the the standard, so it rewrites the text in a readable manner to maintain meaning. You got fluency, ensures text is readable and free of errors. Formal, presents text in a more sophisticated, professional way. Simple, presents text in a way most people can read. Creative, express ideas in a completely new way that may change the meaning. Expand, add more detail and depth to increase the sentence length and shorten. Strip away extra words to provide a clear message. And then you can go ahead and, and add more synonyms or less synonyms. I put more. I, I keep it down here to make it more accurate. So let's go with. Um, I'm gonna go with expand because that's probably gonna be the use I, I'm gonna use it for. All right, and, and I'm pretty sure a lot of others people will use it for. They'll put something in and try to expand it. So I'm going to have it rewrite and expand everything. All right, and let it do its thing. Now this is this. Quillbot's been doing this for so long now. It's one of the first AI to actually be doing this, and that's why it's very, very powerful. Um, so powerful, in fact, that you know, certain. Uh, it, it, I think certain schools kind of banned the use of this because you know it's it's kind of cheating. <laughs> so you know, this is this really should be used for kind of like you know, to improve your your writing, your own work, not not to do anything illegal. All right, I just want to put that disclaimer out there. All right, so once it's done, you can go ahead and copy this. And then I'm going to put it into Grammarly to see how much it improved over the last one. So if you remember, the original was 73. All right, after I did some grammar editing and put it back at 78, now I did some paraphrasing. And let's see what it, how it compares to both. Let me delete everything, reset. Okay, it's reset. Now let me go ahead and paste it, paste the uh, paraphrased version. And as you can see, it overscores 80. And uh, correctness is looking good. It's a little unclear, very engaging, slightly off. And the uh, style is all good. Let me read it to you. That, that, that's the best indicator. So let, let, let you be the judge. All right, so there are a number of drawbacks associated with the use of prepaid credit cards. Uh, credit cards that consumers need to be aware of before making the switch to this payment method. This article will go over these and it is my hope that it will assist you in making more informed choices when using these playing cards. When shopping online with prepaid credit cards, it is imperative to be aware of the website that you are purchasing from. Some websites will try to steal money from you by tricking you into paying for goods or services that you will not actually receive. When you shop online with a prepaid credit card, you put yourself at a higher risk of falling victim to fraud of this kind. When you go shopping, you should always check the balance on your credit card to ensure that you have enough money to pay for the items you intended to purchase. It is inconvenient to have to wait in a long line to purchase something only to get to the register and discover that you do not have sufficient funds to complete the transaction. All right. I mean, it, it, it sounds readable to me. Uh, nothing wonky. I, I I like it. It's it's quite quite. And that, let's say if you don't like this one, let let's try something else. Let's try the um, let's try the creative. Let, let's try to make it something completely new. So I'm going to go ahead and click on creative, and let it paraphrase everything and make it. Uh, Make it something unique from the original. All right, let's see. Now it's going to go down. Okay, it's done. Now you want to see one out of 22 sentences. It's copy. And let's see how it goes. So let me delete this. And now I press uh, Control V, copy this in. All right, and it has about the same overall score. Let's go ahead and read it. All right. Prepared credit cards have their benefits, but they also have some drawbacks that you should be aware of. These cards will be discussed in detail in this article, and I hope that it will assist you in making more informed choices when using them. When purchasing online, uh, when purchasing online using a prepaid credit card, be 
cautious of where you're going. You may be scammed by some websites into paying for things or services you never receive. All right, so it, it, it's it's interesting. Right? It's readable. Uh, there are, I mean, there are some grammar like issues, but look, when it comes down to this grammar detection, there are also other free softwares that you can use to you know kind of detect uh, grammar mistakes and or help you kind of detect it. So, I I would like overall let me let me just give you my my summary. When it comes down to price, Quillbot is hands down the better choice. Okay. Uh, it, it's just better overall. Uh, when it comes down to options, you, Quillbot again I think wins. Uh, it's a power. It has a paraphrasing tool that can do many different things: it's shorten, expand, make something new, dumb it down, make it something f fancy, uh, <laughs> make something readable, right? And then you got the plagiarism checker. You got a co-writer where you can basically coll collaborate with other people. Uh, I don't I haven't used this yet, all right, so I'm not going to go into that. You have a summarizer, all right, so basically you just paste your topic and hit the summarize button, and it summarizes everything, the key po key sentences, and then you have a citation generator. Now, that's a lot of tools versus Grammarly. Oops, you only have basically a, a grammar checker and a plagiarism checker. Now, does it do those things well? Yeah, it does. It does it good, good enough. But is it worth twelve dollars a month? That's the question. I don't think so. In my opinion, I don't think so. I, I paid it because there was, for the while, it was it was the only one of the only options available. Um, so I, I I used it and it was convenient. But now that Quillbot is out, uh, it, it basically not out, but it was it, it's added on the grammar feature. Right? It was it only had the paraphrasing feature for ages. Now it added the grammar feature checker. Uh, I, I prefer Quillbot because you know you can click one button and you can get you, you know you can basically have your your errors fixed for you. Uh, not all of it, but you know like a, like a decent amount. You can rewrite it. You can summarize it. You can do so many things. So if I were to summarize what is Quillbot and what is Grammarly or who are they for? Quillbot is a kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none. It does everything well, but it's not super like amazing in one thing. Grammarly is good at plagiarism detection, but uh, other softwares like maybe Copyscape can do plagiarism a lot better. Um, its grammar detection is good, but you can also use other free programs such as Hemingway app to detect your grammar errors. So. Now, all in all, if you're gonna buy a a or pay for a, a software, I I would pick Quillbot because it's it's a very versatile software and it's affordable. Right? It works. Number one, it works. It works well. It works decently well, and it's affordable. They're not charging you something ridiculous of upwards of fifty, sixty dollars a month, and then and then on top of that, a a credit system where you you can only use a uh, certain amount of plagiarism. Now, the only credit system they have is for the plagiarism checker, but everything else, from my understanding, is unlimited, right? So that, that's the amazing thing about it, um, and and it's been around. This is time tested. Quillbot has is not is not uh, just a new startup that's going to disappear and change or change its name and, and then rebrand itself. Quillbot has been around for a while. So if I had to pick the two, I'm going to move in, and I I have got I I do have both. I pay for both. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Quillbot. Because just the functionality is so much so much better. Um, however, the one caveat I like to add is if the, if you really need to rely on heavy plagiarism checker, uh, you might want to pick some other software. That that that's the only weakness of Quillbot. Everything else is 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 decent. Grammar checker, one click grammar checker, a one click paraphraser. Uh, you have a co collaboration, and then you also have a summarize and citation generator. So this is this is excellent for it could be academic work, it could be you know business work, it could be anything. So uh, it, it's very u unique, and you don't have to buy a separate software. Like you don't have to buy Grammarly just for the grammar checker and plagiarism, and then an AI software for the paraphraser. You you have everything under one roof, and th it's very reasonable. One thing I don't li I really like is that uh, the prices are affordable. They don't they don't charge like in the sky prices for the software. Uh, so I hope this video was helpful, and if it was, could you please hit the like button? I you know I spent a lot of money and time to you know use both softwares. So, you know, it would mean the world to me if you, you know, you can just hit the like button and, uh, you know, let the algorithm know that uh, this video was helpful.
And if you like more videos like this, you can go ahead and leave leave your your comments down below. If you have any questions about either software, just uh, leave the comments uh, section and, and let me know on what kind of questions you have about each software. Now maybe I'll make a follow up video answering those questions. All right, so I'm Vince from Digital Nomad, Digital Nomad Institute. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.